Good morning, everybody. Good to be with you this morning, this wonderful Tuesday morning, second day of the work week, and we're all excited and pumped and ready for a great day, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, well, maybe somebody is. Maybe somebody is. Carol, good morning. Good to see you this morning. Trust everybody's looking forward to a good day today. Brother Michael Ross, Sister Margaret Archer, good morning. Good to see you both. You know, I was just praying before we come online, Ian and Glennis, good morning. You know, we don't know, Pete Soloway, good morning. We don't know what a day is going to bring forth. We, sometimes there's unexpected things. But I don't know, when you pray, I, I ask the Lord to give me the grace to handle the unexpected. Amanda, good morning. So uh, I just said this morning, Lord, nothing too unexpected, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, yes, those unexpected things that come across our paths. So anyway, I hope it, I hope it's going to be a, I don't know, a normal, a normal day. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what's normal today. I don't know. I don't know what's normal. But anyway, Sarah Chapman Stone, good morning to you. You and Pete doing well. All right. Well, this morning I'm in uh, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 this morning. If you're following in your Bibles, if not, as always, just have a listen. And uh, one of our men on Sunday morning, Brother John Gadeen, did a, did a, a great lesson uh, in this uh, chapter on Sunday morning. Tracy, good morning. And uh, as he was teaching, I, I was just you know, get some thoughts and I was just looking at some things and underlined some things in this little passage that I want to share with you this morning. And I want to talk about, I want to talk about wisdom, wisdom reveals truth. Wisdom reveals truth. Um, we all, we've all heard and, and, and we'll continue to hear uh, lessons and messages on wisdom. And that's a good thing. You know, again, look, the Bible is inexhaustible. The topics of the scriptures are inexhaustible. And there are times where we should, everyone, preachers and people alike, ought to be reminded of the, the simple truths of the scriptures. And we all know that wisdom is the right application of knowledge and, and understanding and, and all of that. We, we get that so much in the Bible in regards to wisdom. And of course, Proverbs is known as the book of wisdom. Uh, Proverbs was written by Solomon when he was middle-aged. Uh, Song of Solomon was his book when he wrote when he was very young. And then Ecclesiastes is the book that Solomon wrote when he was older, when he was elderly and <laughs> he'd gone through some stuff. I tell you, uh, there's a lot of wisdom in, in, the, in the elderly, all right? A lot of wisdom in the elderly. I mean, they've gone through some stuff, you know. So uh, wisdom is important. We've got books dedicated to it. And, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to understand and apply wisdom. But wisdom reveals truth. And I want to share this passage with you. And I want you to think about this. Look what Jesus said in Matthew eleven sixteen, 16. Or have a listen to what Jesus said. He says, Whereunto shall I liken this generation? Whereunto sh now, I, look, I don't know how you think. All right. I, I, when I read this, and I know that when, when this was written, when Jesus personally said this, He's talking about the generation that he's in. But when I read it today, I, I, I believe that, that Jesus is talking about the generation in which I live in. See what I mean? I mean, the book, the Bible's a living book. The, it, it's timeless. And so when I read when Jesus says, whereunto shall I liken this generation, I, I'm getting set to see what Jesus says about the generation that I live in. Brother Tim, good morning. Now look at what Jesus says about the generation in, in which we live in. And uh, look, this will help us, I'm sure. Je Jesus said this, It is like unto children. Now whenever you see children in the Bible, mentioned in the Bible, it, uh, it, more often than not, it's a picture of immaturity. All right, immaturity. When you, re when you read scriptures like, man, for example, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse number 11, when I was a child, 
I spake as a child, but when I become a man, I put away childish things. Jesus is talking about immaturity and maturity. Childhood, manhood, right? When you're young and when you're older. Cheryl, good morning. All right, so Jesus is, where unto should I liken this generation? Is like unto children. This is a very, he's saying, this is an immature generation that I'm living in, all right? Now, let's have a look at what he says. It is like unto children sitting in the marketplaces and calling unto their fellows and saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. John, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, all right, this generation of immature people, they say, he hath a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man, gluttonous, and a winebibber, and a friend of publicans and sinners, but look what Jesus says here, because it's full stop. And then he says, look this, but wisdom is justified of her children. And, and I, I got to thinking about that. And I thought, you know, when Jesus put that on the end of what he just told us about this generation that, that he, he was living in. And every generation subsequent, because Jesus is truth. And, and what Jesus says is timeless and transcends every generation. So every generation has a, has a generation of... Uh, community in it that are like children that are immature, and what we what we see here is 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 we have a generation uh, who today who who want us to dance according to their tune. All right, he says this. He says we have piped under you and you have not danced. We 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 we've, we've danced to our tune. How come you haven't danced to what we've been playing? You know what I mean. We want you to dance. I tell you this, this, and then when that when you don't do what an immature generation does, they they crack the sooks, all right. And then he says, "We've mourned unto you, right? We've mourned unto you, and you've not lamented." In other words, what upset us didn't upset you. Well, how come you're not upset by what we're upset about? Does that sound a little bit familiar about the generation in which we live? Now, I, I say the term generation, and, and Jesus with with the term generation talk about everybody. You know, and I tell you what's unfortunate is included in the generation are believers. All right. So when you think about the generation, generally speaking, oh yeah, you can see that we live in a in a in a very immature generation, and it's and it's linked to oh, you know, we've we've piped unto you, and you've not done. This is what we've done, and you've not done what we've expected you to do. How come you're not dancing to our tune? How come what we get upset about doesn't upset you? What's going on? And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm not dancing to their tune. All right, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, what upsets them, whether they're unsaved or saved, all right? Honestly, you know, you've got Christians that, that can be put in this too, where, where you've got Christians who, who want to play a tune and they want you to dance to their tune. It's like, well, I'm sorry, I'm not dancing to your tune. And then you've even got believers, oh, we're upset about it. How come you're not upset by what we're upset about? It's like, well, you know, hey, I'm not going to do that. And then it says, they say, again, they say, 18 and 19, they say, they say. You know, listen, when you read your Bible, you go, let me encourage you, very, read it very carefully. What you understand in our Bible is, is the, the importance of what people say. The importance of words. Again, when you think about the book of wisdom, when you think about books like Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, you see Solomon, who was a very wise man, right? Jesus being the wisest, obviously. If you read the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, and even what Jesus said at times, you, you see that there is a great importance upon what people say. Listen to what people say. Because what we're looking at here is that this generation of immaturity want to control you by what they're saying. They're wanting to put you under their type of regime. Oh, we've piped and you haven't danced. Oh, oh, was I supposed to dance? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, quick, play it again. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, well, who died and made your boss? <laughs> we, we're upset about this. How come you're not upset by what we're... Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know I had to get upset by what upsets you. I'm sorry about that. You know what I mean? Like, oh. And then it says, they say, they say. 
This is a generation that you can't win with. Now, I want you to look at it very carefully. Look at what I said. For John came neither eating or drinking, and they say he's got a devil. So John didn't come eating or drinking. Uh, you've got a devil. Jesus, they say, Alan, good evening. They say this about Jesus. Jesus came eating and drinking. And behold, a man that's gluttonous and a wine bib and a friend of publicans and sinners. You can't win. <laughs> John didn't do this and oh, you've got a devil. Jesus came, they said Jesus came doing this and you're, you're gluttonous. You're a wine baby. You're a friend of publicans and sinners. The accusatory nature of this generation. Folks, not just generally speaking, I'm talking about the sad reality that even amongst Christianity today, there is a accusatory nature. They say. Now, they make these accusations. And let me ask you a question. How would you react? How would you react if you had someone making accusations about this? They, you put your name there for John or for Paul or for Peter or, or for Cheryl came or for Tracy or for Carol or for Matt. You know what I mean? If they say, oh, oh you, you didn't come, you've got a devil. How do you react when someone says something about you that you know is not true? It's very difficult to not do anything, right? Yeah, absolutely it is. Because I tell you what happens, the, 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 the old nature wants to rise up and say, and, and you know what we want to do? We want to defend ourselves. And you might think, well, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Well, Jesus never defended himself. He let his actions speak louder than his words at times. But this is, the, this is what's important about the, the statement that Jesus made about that wisdom is justified of her children. So how do you react when, when there's something that's said about you that you know is not true whatsoever? And we know that those that say things never want to know the truth because guess what's going to happen to those that say untruths, accusing things about people. They don't want to know the truth because then they're going to have to uh, apologise. Then they're going to have to humble themselves and, and say to the ones that, uh, the one that they accuse or to the ones that they accuse that person about, hey, I was wrong. Sorry, I got it wrong. No, 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 no. Listen, if maturity apologises. Maturity gets things right. Lisa Winkler, good morning. Maturity knows how to say, hey, you know what? I was wrong. Forgive me, I should never have said that. But pride says, no, I can't. No, I can't. Won't do it. They, a lot of people don't want to know the truth about things because they don't want to look foolish or look like an idiot in front of other people. Hey, Proverbs says a lot about that, folks. We don't have the, we don't have the amount of time to go through all the scriptures dealing with those who are wise Right, and those who are unwise, and the unwise are likened to fools. All right, we live. This is a generation, folks, that we live in. All right, so they label you this or that, and I tell you, don't you grow weary of jumping through hoops? I don't know about you, but I, I, you know what? I stopped a long time. I'm not jumping through your hoops. You know what I mean? I'm just not jumping through. I'm sorry, I'm not jumping. If that means that you don't want to be my friend because I'm not jumping through your hoop, I'm not going to dance when you say dance. You know, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to cry when you say cry. You should be upset. I'm just not jumping through your hoops. You know, when you, just because I want you to, you know, if, if you can't be, if you don't know the truth or if you, don't, if you can't be my friend, hey, Brother Drew, good morning, then, uh, hey, I'm sorry. But I'm not, I'm not jumping through your hoops, man. I tell you, you, you go jump, go find someone else. And what we find is that we find that this generation of children, this immature generation, really is wanting to control. They want to control you. They want you to do what they want you to do. But Jesus said wisdom is justified of her children. Let, let, listen, this is what I believe that this is... There's so much in this. I get this, right? This is, this is partly what Jesus is saying. Let wisdom reveal truth. Wisdom will always reveal the truth. Wisdom is justified of her children. What Did John the Baptist have a devil? No, of course not. Was Jesus a wine-bibber and gluttonous? 
Was he, a, was he a friend of publicans and sinners? Yeah, of course he was a friend of publicans and sinners. Absolutely. And I bet you they were glad too because he got to preach to them. But to say that he was a wine bibber, right, and gluttonous, oh, he came eating and drinking. And, and he, Well, what about if John came eating and drinking? Would they have accepted John? No, they didn't accept John. Folks, this is a generation of, let's go back to Israel. This is a generation of Jews now. They didn't want to accept John or Jesus. And we're living in a generation of non-Christianity today that doesn't want to accept you or I either. So if we want to look at it from that slant as well. Wisdom is justified. of Wisdom reveals the truth. All right. Now, all right, let's go to the book of Proverbs very quickly. All right, very quickly. Go to Proverbs chapter 1. Because the natural tendency when someone says something that is not true, oh, I've, got to, I've got to go and get this sorted out. I've got to go and, and I've got to go here, go here, go here. I've got to get it sorted out. No, no, no. Listen, wisdom. People who are wise and people who court wisdom, people that have a relationship with wisdom, wisdom will reveal to people the truth about you. When people accuse you of, of things that are not right and not true, wisdom will reveal to those others and say, hang on, that's just not right. Let wisdom, let wisdom reveal. Let wisdom have her perfect work. Okay. Look at, uh, I want you to notice some things about wisdom. Did you know that wisdom has a voice? Look at Proverbs chapter one and verse number 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the street. She cried. Wisdom has a voice. And those who are wise, folks, let me tell you, those who are wise will hear the voice of wisdom. All right. Now, that voice come through the scriptures. That voice comes through the spirit. All right. That voice, the wisdom has a voice. And, and the unwise, the ones that go around saying, they say, they say, they don't want to hear wisdom. They don't want to hear truth. Like I said before, then they've got to go around saying, "Wow, well, I got it wrong. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't have said that. So wisdom has a voice that must be heard. And folks, let me tell you, the important people in your life will hear the voice of wisdom and not be swayed by the voice of what they say. Right, let them say what they say. Wisdom will reveal the truth. Secondly, wisdom must enter the heart. Have a look at Proverbs chapter 2 and verse number 20. Wisdom must enter the heart. All right, now this wisdom will enter into your heart if you want wisdom. Look at Proverbs 2 20. Uh, did I write that down properly? Anyway, oh, verse 10. Sorry, look at this. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee. Discretion. Now, discretion. If someone says something like Jesus is saying about this generation of children that pipe and they say and, and they all manner of things, discretion, let, let the discretion of wisdom guide you. All right? Discretion shall preserve thee and understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man and from the man that speaketh froward things. The term froward has the idea of being perverted. All right. Look at what wisdom, when wisdom enters the heart. So someone saying something, this generation says something, generation of non-believers or even a generation of believers. All right. When they say stuff, wisdom will enter into the hearts of the right people and, uh, and, and give them discretion and direct them. All right. Now, look at Proverbs 14.33. Proverbs 14.33 along the same lines. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding. But that which is in the midst of fools is made known. All right. That which is in the midst of fools will be made known. So the... <laughs> Can I just say this? Basically, what our Lord is saying that this generation of children, foolish, just fools. You know, John the Baptist didn't come eating and drinking, and they say he's got a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. 
And they say he's a, he's a wine bibber and gluttonous, a friend of publicans and sinners trying to discredit him, trying to muddy his character and his name, his reputation, all of that, folks. Oh, my soul. It is alive and well out in the world, I tell you. But wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding. All right. Now, lastly, wisdom is a relationship that benefits. I want you to go back to Proverbs chapter 7. Wisdom is a relationship. Have a relationship with wisdom. All right. I love how, I love how it's worded in, in Proverbs. I love how it's worded. Look at Proverbs chapter 7, verse number 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. And call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her lips. And, and it goes on, all right? So Solomon's giving some wise counsel to young men here as you follow on through this. But he's saying, have a, when, you think about, when you think about, it's a relationship, isn't it? Call wisdom your sister. Have a relationship with wisdom. And you say, well, how do I do that? Well, it's very simple. It always comes back to having a relationship with the scriptures, having a great relationship with your saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? But you've got to have a relationship. And those, those people that do, right, those people that hear the voice of wisdom, those people that will allow wisdom into their heart, those people that have a relationship with wisdom, when they hear they say, wisdom reveals the truth. Now, we pray that those that do say these things would get right, apologise and all that, but sometimes they don't. But as long as wisdom reveals the truth to those that want to know, they say, hey, Paul doesn't have a devil. Paul's not a wine bibber and gluttonous. This person's not this. This per Wisdom is justified of her children. Lynn, good morning. So have a relationship with wisdom. Let wisdom into your heart and hear the voice of wisdom. Wisdom will... Uh, Wisdom will reveal the truth. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Lord, thank you for wisdom. And Lord, if any of us lack wisdom, let us ask of you that give to us liberally. Lord, you want us to have abundance of wisdom. And so I pray as we start this day out that we would want to hear the voice of wisdom we want wisdom to enter in our heart. Of course, we want to have a relationship with wisdom. Help us today by your spirit to do just that. Lead us and guide us. Whatever we do today, may we do it for your glory. Fill us with your spirit. Give us opportunity to be a witness. Protect us. Give us grace to handle the things that cross our path today. And we'll be mindful to give you all the praise and all the glory. Again, again may we have the wisdom in our jobs and in our lives and, and what we do. Please, Lord. And for those that do say things, we pray that their heart would be open to wisdom and that they would be mature enough to say, hey, I was wrong there. Sorry. Bless us as we go in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for joining me this morning. Appreciate that. Always appreciate you giving your time. I really do. And uh, remember what Jesus said, you shall know the truth. Truth shall make you free. Have a great day. And until tomorrow, God bless you. And I will see you then. Bye for now.